the love of track and field, uh, which was my natural and first sport. Uh, and I, that was the thing I wanted to do most. Jimmy Breslin wrote a famous article that was in the Saturday Evening Post. How many people in any sport has that been said that the person is going to destroy the game? Basketball star Will Chamberlain clears the high jump at six, six and a quarter. The legend grew at the University of Kansas. Will was a conference champion in the high jump and played a little basketball too. And here comes this phenomenon showing everybody what the future is. He was just a teenager, but he was already a huge star. He was the dominant athlete in the United States at 17 years of age. By senior year, he was very full of himself because the world was full of him. Record sellout throng turned out to watch the widely heralded Chamberlain Every time you opened up the paper, you would read something about Will Chamberlain. He was changing how basketball games were played in the mid-50s. Stylistically, he was unprecedented. There was nobody who was like Will. You know, this was the first real athlete, seven feet and above. In his three seasons at Overbrook, Will lost just three games and rewrote the record books. One game, he scored 90 points. It was unreal. It's impossible to describe. There was no way of stopping him. In our gym, he could run the length of the gym in four or five steps and dunk the ball. He scored 90 points in 28 minutes in the high school game. And he had 15 points in one minute. With Wilt, Overbrook won three public school championships and two all-city championships. In 1953, he led his Christian Street Y team to the YMCA National Championship. Wilt was fast becoming a national phenomenon. And in 10 minutes, I scored like 62 points. You know? And now 62 points in 10 minutes, I laugh about it because Jesus, you know, that's a lot of points. That's a lot of time getting up and down the court, especially when the team you're playing in is trying to freeze the ball. We would play a team like Oklahoma State, and uh, they might pass the ball 40, 45 times before they'd uh, attempt a shot, realizing that uh, any time you ran with the team that Wilt was on, that you're probably going to get blown out pretty good. The other coaches around the country said, if we're going to play Kansas and we're going to play Will Chamberlain, we're going to have to find out some way to stop this guy from scoring points. When he came to Kansas, the rumor got out and scared the daylights out of everybody in the country. They said he could stand at the free throw line and just leap and stop which under the old rules would have been legal. Wilt was taking two steps back from the free throw line, then taking two long strides, taking off from the back of the line, and then dunking the ball. That would have been his free throw. So that rule was changed. The ball had to hit the rim before you could cross the line. Wilt felt like he's being legislated against which he was. He was so big and so overwhelming that uh, nobody could ever deal with him on a basketball court. I came to the NBA as a defensive player. I used to like to go up and grab balls right around the area. So everyone was afraid of my defensive game, more so than my uh, scoring game. Wilt would not only block your shot, Wilt could go up in the air and catch your shot, which was like, ooh. Wilt was frustrated with opponents slowing down the game and pounding him physically. More contact was allowed against Wilt because he was big enough, he was supposed to be able to handle that. 
and still play his game. He used to wear knee pads on his shins. People say, why do you wear them down there? You don't protect your knees. He says, I have to have them down there to protect my shins when I'm rebounding because the elbows hit me in the shins. One night in Missouri, I went in after the game, and there were teeth marks in his right forearm. Somebody bit the young man. He took a terrible physical pound. It was not an interesting game for him, the way people played him got to the point where you felt like, well, this just isn't worth it. He couldn't go to the NBA because in those days you couldn't play before your high school class had graduated from college. And so there was little choice left for him. So Wilt left Kansas and signed with the Trotters for the then astronomical sum of $65,000. When a reporter pointed out that was more money than the president made, Wilt joked he could jump high. So after his junior year, he left Kansas and joined the most famous team in the world, the Harlem Globetrotters. The Trotters are a team of basketball wizards featuring one of the most talked about players in years, seven foot Wilt Chamberlain. He gloried in going to the Globetrotters because he could show that he could play that kind of basketball. Wilt wanted always to exhibit his diversity. Life magazine did a spread in which the nation's tallest basketball players were featured holding the ball up under the rim and through the net. And I can still see that spread. It's still formidable. You know, uh, basketball fans are waiting to see how you're going to do in the, in the NBA, especially against uh, players of great uh, capabilities, fellows like uh, Bill Russell, for instance, of the uh, Boston Celtics. Now, you will be playing man for man, as I, as I mentioned. Do you, do you feel that you are ready for this? You've been ganged up on pretty much through your collegiate career and with the Trotters. Do you think the Trotters, for instance, helped you any? Well, I actually do. I think there will be a period of orientation for me to cross like it is for every newcomer in the NBA, but I think in the long run I'll be able to handle myself man to man with almost anyone in the league. Coach Bog Allen calls Chamberlain already one of the greatest players I've ever seen.